never, ever should you write without an outline. It's a complete waste of time. Mm -hmm. Here, let me just share my screen. Writing consists of three elements, and it has always been this way in all of recorded history. Writing consists of content, arrangement, and delivery. Content is the subject matter. It's what you're talking about. It's how much detail you provide. Arrangement means the organization of ideas, grouping ideas into paragraphs, using transitions. And delivery refers to vocabulary and grammar. So all three of these elements are always included in every single thing that every single person uh, produces. This isn't just writing. This is true for musical compositions. This is true for artistic compositions. So if you're talking about a work of art, a photo that you take, content is the subject matter, right? For example, you're taking uh, pictures of your kids. Arrangement is, are those kids standing in front of a tree? Are they standing in front of your house? Uh, what's in the background? Where are they placed in the picture in relation to each other? So that's, that would be arrangement in a photo. Delivery would be, for example, the lighting and the color. So are you going to produce the photo in black and white, sepia, or full color? Are you going to use filters? Uh, so regardless of what you're producing, it's composed of these three elements. Now, it's hard to deal with all three of these things simultaneously. Especially when you're new, it's really hard to do. And professionals don't try and do this. They know better than to even bother. So that's why they always start with an outline. You, when you start writing full sentences and paragraphs, the problem is, is that you're committing a lot of effort into doing so. And when people put effort into something, they are very reluctant to change it, even when it doesn't work. So I've heard comments from people writing who've written the exam and who say things like, you know, I was halfway through my essay when I realized that I was off topic. And I'm like, okay, so you started over? And she's like, no, no, I just kept writing. I was too far into it. Oh my God, right? This happens because you don't do an outline first. You look at the prompt, you answer the prompt in outline form only. And then you look back at the prompt and you look back at your outline and you look at the prompt and you look at your outline and you look at the prompt a third time and you look at your outline a third time. When you're satisfied that your outline answers the prompt 100%, then you transform your point form outline into full sentences and paragraphs, not before. Because first of all, the most important thing is that what you're writing about actually answers the prompt. Even, even in the last the assignment, one of, the, yeah, go ahead. The outline is basically the, uh, it, it is uh, the answer of your prompt? It's the answer to the question, but in point form only. Okay. So your, your outline is just going to be reason. Number one for your answer. Okay. Example. Reason number two. Example for reason number two. In a nutshell, that's what your answer is. Okay. Can you uh, give a brief uh, example? Like how we can word the, uh, the prompt into outline? Because I, I, I'm facing problem with this again and again. You're writing me. <laughs> I'm off the outline. 
the outline is just your answer, but not in sentences and paragraphs. It just means you, you don't worry about spelling, you don't worry about grammar, you're just writing in point form. Like, do you know what it means to write in point form? Uh, not the description, just uh, bullet forms? Yeah, just bullet points. So, for example, for one of our previous questions, uh, computers allow us to stay connected with each other. However, they also encourage people not to go out and socialize. To what extent do you agree? Okay. okay. Reason one would be something, what could we say for reason one? And it doesn't matter if we're using real arguments or not here. So, uh, sir, I have not attended the class. Could you please repeat the... Yeah, so it said computers allow us to stay connected with each other. Mm -hmm. but they also encourage people not to go out and socialize. Okay. So reason one, because mm -hmm. you spend a lot of time on a screen, that's why you don't have time to family or to go out. Mm -hmm. And then example would be some kind of supporting example from your own personal history or something you've read about, some kind of research study that you want to talk about. Uh, like now, uh, every kid has his uh, own mobile or iPad or screen, so they, over the last 10 years, the use of daily screen time increased. Two to six hours. So. Okay, so I do like this, and then I would say, um, let's say, best friend, always on computer, never has time to go out with friends, and I could say something like, Last week said couldn't come out to see us, but we noticed she was posting on Facebook while we were out at dinner. Okay. Right. I don't care about grammar. I don't care about punctuation or spelling or anything. This is my whole idea, right? And this is easy to picture. And you hear this all the time. People saying, oh, no, I'm too busy. I can't go out. And then when you're out with your friends, you keep hearing bing, bing, bing. And the person's like posting on Facebook yeah. when she said she was too busy to go out, right? So she's not too busy. She's just on media. So reason one. And often, if you have a clear example in your mind, mm -hmm it's easy to work backwards and generalize it into your reason. Okay. People spend enormous amounts of time online, no time for anything else. Okay, that's my first reason. So this is basically the outline. Yeah. And then for every question, you need two reasons and you need an example for each of your reasons. Okay. And then I write my other example. And then based on this, this is tiny. So we have to write it down before starting our um, essay or our writing assignment? We have to make yeah. offline and everything? Yeah. Absolutely. Absolutely. This is not extra work. Okay. This is not extra work. You're writing on a computer. In the old days, yes, you would have a separate outline sitting next to your screen as you're typing away, as you're writing away. Even famous editors. I, I take a course with, with uh, one famous editor. He's done tons and tons of bestsellers. 
And when authors come to him and he's assigned to an author to help that person improve their book before the publisher uh, releases it, he always forces the writer, if they haven't done this already, to create an outline for their book on one side of one sheet of paper. This is for a book that's three to 500 pages and he forces them to condense their outline to a single side of one sheet of paper. Because because anything bigger starts to be a bit unwieldy. This is like a map, right? Where I can just take in at a glance all of the key ideas. And as I'm writing the full version, I keep looking back at my map, at my outline, where I can see the whole story. I can see the whole story flow just at a glance. I don't have to turn the page over. I don't have to look for other sheets of paper that might have slipped behind my desk, fallen on the floor, had coffee spilled on them, who knows what. Okay. Right, so this this is not like a random thing I'm asking you to do. This is what every professional does because it works. It's not an extra step, it's a critical step. Even we had a one of our strongest writers the other day she didn't do an outline and one of her paragraphs was completely uh, inappropriate it was off topic Mm -hmm. this happens to even really strong uh, native english speakers people who are really good writers they go in they think they're going to get a band nine and they write something that's absolutely beautiful but it's off topic and they get a garbage score and they're wondering why. So we don't want that to happen to you. And it's not extra work because as soon as you're happy with this, you're satisfied that it does answer the prompt, you just take this, you you don't even need to copy it or anything, you just start transforming this into sentences and paragraphs. So let's talk about our first prompt of the day. And this one we're just going to to use more for analysis because we've got a good sample here. Being a celebrity, such as a famous actor or athlete, brings benefits but also causes problems. Do you think that being a celebrity brings more advantages or disadvantages? Now, something I want to mention about this prompt too. For this one, do you need to talk about both sides? No, as you told us. Exactly. One side only, you can treat this as agree, disagree. You can mention the side you don't agree with but your focus needs to be on supporting one position with multiple reasons, with two reasons for the same side. So let's go through this one. And again, today we're gonna spend time talking about how to develop our ideas, because for some of you trying to push task achievement to an eight might be able to help you overcome getting a six in grammar. Because if you get eight, seven, seven, six, you still end up with your seven. Clearly, being famous has upsides as well as downsides, but in my opinion, the positives do not outweigh the negatives as being famous must be incredibly frustrating and stressful. What do you notice about this introduction? Being famous has uh, more disadvantages, so it's it's more stressful than, than something. Uh... Yeah. What I notice about this intro is it's really short. It's a single sentence. Okay. Now, 
writing task two is a bit different from writing task one. Writing task one, you need to have a general overview, which is like the equivalent of a thesis, but it's not an argument, so we can't call it a thesis. It needs to be detailed in the sense that you give a summary of the main patterns or trends in the graph. But in this one, you basically just need to state the context and give your position on the issue. You don't get any marks for developing the introduction. If you're a very strong writer, it's okay to give a detailed thesis. That's what's expected if you're in an actual classroom, uh, college, university, high school, but you have weeks or months to write this stuff. So that is expected. Here, state the context, give your position, don't spend a lot of time writing a detailed thesis. Save your effort for the body paragraphs, which is where almost all the marks are. Okay, let's see how he supports his uh, position. Okay, incredibly frustrating and stressful. It is certainly true that fame brings with it large amounts of money and this makes life choices easier. However, it comes at a great cost. Right, notice this is the only thing he said about the opposite point of view. Right, these are the only advantages he's provided. And then right away, he comes into his position, that it comes at a great cost. And so what is this cost? Privacy, which we all take for granted, is something that celebrities fight to regain after becoming famous. What does that mean? Right, so this is an abstraction. This is a general idea and it's not something that you can visualize. Remember, good writing means writing pictures that people can see in their mind. This is how he does it. Often, when they're going about their daily business, they're followed and hassled by paparazzi, and no wonder they occasionally lose control and end up in trouble. Okay, so that's an extension, that's a development of this idea. It's getting easier and easier to visualize. Now, boom, he talks about Justin Bieber. Right? Lots of people are familiar with the nonsense this kid has done. Justin Bieber is a prime example of this as he has had a number of altercations with photographers who have refused to stop photographing him, even after he has asked them to stop multiple times. This has led to him being in trouble with the police. This example shows that being famous can be very stressful. So he hasn't quoted any research. He's just given this one example of Justin Bieber. Right? He explains the idea. He extends the idea. And then he gives an example that's very easy to visualize. Okay? This is the significant statement. This example shows that being famous can be very stressful. It reminds the reader of his position on the issue. Paragraph two. Furthermore, being a celebrity must also be very frustrating as they're constantly unfairly judged. For instance, Christy, uh, Chrissy Teigen, a famous American model, had a baby a few years ago. Right away goes into an example. A week after she'd given birth, she went out for dinner with a friend and posted photos of her and her friend on her Twitter account. When she woke up the next day, she found that she'd been bombarded with tweets saying that she was a terrible mother for leaving her baby at home and going out so soon after giving birth. I remember reading in an interview with her that this led to her having severe doubts about her ability as a mother, even though she had done nothing wrong. This also shows that being famous has significant drawbacks. To conclude, fame comes at a heavy price and one that I believe very much outweighs the benefits. Okay. Again, no detail in the conclusion, very short to the point. What is your position on the issue? That's all that thesis needs to show. Uh, I've got a question, John. Yeah. Um... So 
at the beginning on the outline is said advantages and disadvantages. So what I can understand is that you choose one. It could be advantages, disadvantages, and then you concentrate about that one, mm -hmm. right? So we don't have to talk about advantages or disadvantages. There are three types of prompts that have the words advantages and disadvantages in them. You might have something like discuss the advantages and disadvantages. Mm -hmm. And in this one, no opinion. It's one paragraph for advantages, one for disadvantages. Mm -hmm. You might have discuss the advantages and disadvantages and give your opinion. So you have to do both. Okay. You do, again, two body paragraphs. One body paragraph that simply describes the advantages, for example, mm -hmm. and then another paragraph that describes the disadvantages, and you would also include that that's your opinion. On the other hand, there are significant disadvantages of blah, 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 including da, 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 and I agree. Mm -hmm. okay, these, like, mm -hmm. And so, in this case, you've got, do the advantages outweigh the disadvantages? Uh, that's basically what this phrasing is. And it's basically agree, disagree. Choose one side, you don't need to talk about both. Okay. Right, so it's incredibly important to read the prompt and make sure you're confident that you know how to answer it. It's a big waste of time to talk about both. And what often happens is that it looks like this one if you talk about both. And then you've got one paragraph about the pros, one paragraph about the cons, and it's not clear what your opinion is. Okay. Mr. Yuna, I have a question. Yep. Uh, for the last, for the last uh, question, like, uh, to, what, to what extent do you agree? On uh, this situation, we should just agree. Right? Or disagree. Even if it's written, to what extent do you agree? Yeah, that means do you agree or disagree? It's the exact same thing. Oh. Okay. Where because people... Like, yeah. Because I thought, like, to what extent do you agree? Only you have to talk about, like, uh, agree. Because it's, yeah, but, you're, but your answer to that question can be, I completely disagree. To what extent do you agree? I don't, I completely disagree. Or I agree 100%. So with that type of question, it feels like there's a range. Like they're asking, do you completely agree? Do you mostly agree? Do you kind of agree and kind of disagree? Don't do that. Just either completely agree or completely disagree and give two supporting reasons. Because the same thing happens. If you say, I kind of agree, I kind of disagree, what often happens is that it's not clear what your position on the issue is. Yes, you can do it. I strongly suggest that you not do that. Two reasons for one side. All right, this is an English test, not a topic test. So it really doesn't matter what you truly believe in your heart. You pick a, you pick a writing strategy that makes it easy to write. It's much easier to write two reasons on one side. Okay, so I'd like to ask you for this topic, does anyone else have a good example that they could fully develop? Remember, both of these paragraphs are about a single person. Can anyone 
tell maybe a short story or anecdote about another celebrity. It could be a famous athlete, it could be a movie star, and provide some examples of how being a celebrity has brought disadvantages to their life. You know what, let me give you 10 to 15 minutes to write a body paragraph about a celebrity. You can't pick Bieber, you can't pick Chrissy Teigen. Mr. Ryan, can we talk in general like without mentioning a name? Because- What are you gonna do for the example then? Because the example's mandatory. I know, but maybe we talk about situation that those celebrities, when they go outside with their family, like for example, for a dinner, a lot of like interference from a photographer or from people, so there is no privacy. They don't have quality time with their family. Yeah, so, so pick a celebrity that this happened to recently and make up some kind of uh, escalation of the incident that happened. Um, yeah, my question, if we didn't mention the name of that celebrity, it's okay, like we say, like this example? No, that's not really an example. That's, uh, Dina, that's what we would call, I use this word, I'm not sure if everyone knows what I mean, an abstraction. Like generalization over generalization? Yeah. If I, if I can't picture it in my mind, it's not really an example. Look, just make up a name of a local celebrity. The examiner's never gonna know or care what you're talking about. You know, a local actor or a local actress who is very famous in my hometown, make up a name. Okay. Does, okay, before we even start, does anyone have any uh, suggestions of celebrities who are kind of famous for having run-ins with the media for getting into fights with reporters i will speak about tupac tupac okay <laughs> the, there's a very 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 famous case that happened oh, i think i was still a teenager when it happened probably the most famous case in the world yeah. of cele of a celebrity being basically hounded to death by paparazzi. Who am I Princess, thinking of? The Princess, Princess yeah. Diana, yeah. That's it, Princess Diana. That's where I think this question comes from. So if you talk about Princess Diana, that's one paragraph. Talk about what happened in, uh, in Paris, for example. Right? That's, that's, I think, a pretty easy example to talk about. Okay, so I'll give you 10, 15 minutes max to write one paragraph. We're not gonna focus much on the grammar, just on the development of ideas. Read these over a couple more times. Your, your paragraph should be fairly chunky. Like this, this one here is 307 words. Uh, this, this whole text, this paragraph is 120 words, 127, sorry, this one is 133, wow, that's close, six words apart. So that's roughly what you're aiming for. So we want a topic sentence, a well-developed example, and a significant statement. Okay, go ahead, 10, 15 minutes. Okay, let's have a look at these. We're gonna start with Amars. Okay, so this would be your topic sentence, right? Uh, hi, Amar, are you there? Yeah, I am. Okay. 
One thing I want to caution you about, watch out for pronouns in topic sentences. I suggest not using them because what does they refer to? Celebrities, right? Yes. Okay. So use a, use a specific noun or name in the topic sentence at least. For instance, Princess Diana, the first wife principles. She and her boyfriend. Boyfriend is one word. You've got a double subject. Princess Diana and she. So you can't have two subjects. And her new one. She's by photographers. Okay. Um, this is 47 words. You need about 70 more. Yeah. You, you need a couple sentences in here. What else could Amar say here? Let's let's help them out. Any suggestions for what we could add here? Yeah, maybe he could um, add why she was famous. Mm -hmm. I mean, I know she's famous because she married Prince Charles, but what did she do to become even more famous? Because yeah. she's famous not because she was Prince Charles only. Because of her charity work? Correct, yeah. Uh, youth, attractiveness, mm -hmm. uh, charity work. I don't think that came till later, right? I'm not. I'm not a hundred percent sure, but I don't think that came till later. Uh, I did not get. What is this related to her death? Mm -hmm. Yeah. I didn't. No, I mean, I did not understand what is. Okay, so yes, Dina is absolutely correct that you always have to bring it back to the prompt. Uh, the ample that being famous can end your life, right? So it's a disadvantage. Okay. Or you could just, you don't necessarily need to talk about why she was famous, because, I mean, she was a princess in England. Uh, so why she was famous could take you far away from the topic. What you could talk about was during her life, she was constantly hounded by, and you want to know how to spell paparazzi, double Z, double Z as we say in the British world. What else could we say? Why were they chasing after her in this case? For a financial reason? Mm -hmm. But she was also with her new boyfriend, right? Been mm -hmm. divorced. And even after being divorced, they never left her alone. Wasn't even left alone after her divorce from Prince Charles. And asked to be left alone but the press was relentless to the point of chasing 
her vehicle mm. at dangerous speeds. Okay. Literally chased her to death. Oh, I thought the driver was strong. That's why they have an accident, right? Yeah. I see. That's why, but it doesn't change the point. If they hadn't been driving at a high speed in order to escape from the paparazzi, mm -hmm. then even if they'd had an accident, it would have been okay. They were in an enormous Mercedes Benz. Uh, the reason they died was because they hit that pillar at an extremely high rate of speed that you couldn't survive in any car. But at a slower speed, A, he w probably would not have crashed it, and B, if he had crashed it, they probably still would have been okay. All right, only the bodyguard survived because he was a former soldier, so he understood what to do with his body um, uh -huh. at the point of impact. Oh. All right, but the, the driver, the boyfriend, Diana, dead. Jeez. Right, but you don't need to go into that much detail, like all these extra points. Like he's, he's already, Amar, you already made your point here. We know mm -hmm. the story. But yeah. the problem is you have to extend your description. Uh, how long is this now? This is now 104 words, so it's better, but it's still a little bit short. So what you did here, you need to at least double it. You can, you can give more description or more, uh, uh, more details about her uh, previous life with uh, Prince Charles. But, and why they get divorced and why they are under the no no no, no no don't 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 do don't go there because mm -hmm. the focus of the question is being a celebrity brings benefits but also problems so if this is how you're answering then you need to focus on the problems of being a celebrity so everything that you write about has to be about her struggles with the paparazzi <laughs> So maybe you can add like, if she shouldn't be famous, probably she will be alive. Um, yeah, that's, that's probably true. But it's also off topic, right? Because it's not about solutions to this problem. It's about just do you think this is true or not? That's it. You don't have to go deeper than that. In fact, if you do try and go deeper than that, it's off topic because they're not asking about that. So the only thing you need to talk about is the problems that she experienced as a result of uh, being a paparazzi. Thanks. Now, also note that you could easily flip this around because she also used her celebrity to draw attention to important issues. For example, what was her, um, what was the big issue that she campaigned on that was very important to her? Does anyone remember? Uh, repeat again, Jen. Why, what issue was very important to Diana? What did Diana try and change in the world? And she actually succeeded quite well Landmines. Something discrimination. Landmines. Yeah. Landmine. Getting rid of landmines after conflicts were over, because you know landmines just stick around, right? The armies that are leaving, they don't clean up their landmines, and then kids and farmers step on them and get their legs blown off. So she campaigned on. I think she's trying to get them banned. A few countries refused to do anything like the United States, but many countries agreed that landmines are awful and should not be used, right? or, or should be properly cleaned up after 
after a conflict. So that would also be a great example if you want to use this for the opposite point of view. And she took advantage of her celebrity because she knew that any issue she picked, the press would report on it nonstop if that's what she talked about. Uh, if you want to talk about the United States, presidents' wives could be considered celebrities. And they also often have issues that are very dear to them. And because they're celebrities, the media listens to what they talk about. Okay, so uh, Barack Obama's life, uh, wife, what was important to her? What was one of the causes that she championed? Healthy food for kids, healthy diets. Okay, so she brought a lot of attention to that topic about what people were feeding their kids. So it's easy to talk about both sides on this one. All right, let's uh, let's look at someone else's. Allah, there we go. Trouble, get you in trouble. Celebrities, mafia, or even their own fans. We're going to change it to your own fans. Get the famous in jail or die. Which can get the famous. Which can get the famous in jail. See, the grammar doesn't work because it's uh, get get the famous die. In other words, so this is not in other words, this is an example. <clears throat> For example, Tupac Shakur was a famous American singer killed in 2002 in New York and one later reports was shot by a non-person. Huh? What's a non-person? Like a non-killer. Uh, sorry, say again? A non-killer. Oh, unknown killer. They don't know. Yes. Okay. Mm. Anonom anonymous? Anonymous? Anonymous, yeah. Or wasn't it Biggie? Didn't Biggie have him killed? Yeah, I think <laughs> they, they said like uh, Biggie and... But okay. like, I don't know. This, okay. Does, does anyone have any opinion about this paragraph? Do you think this is what they're looking for? Have you made the connection between Tupac's celebrity and the reason why he was killed? Yeah, because like I thought I said like at the beginning, he could like uh, killed by his own, uh, your, his own fans or other celebrity. Maybe. Um. This is where you're running into trouble. It's that just because somebody is a celebrity and something bad happens to them. That's not enough to support your idea for this prompt. You have to explain how the problems caused by being a celebrity bring either advantages or disadvantages. Or the problems caused by celebrity, why do they bring disadvantages? Or why do the benefits, uh, why are the benefits advantageous? So that connection is not here in this paragraph. And then you've got John F. Kennedy. Well, he wasn't killed because he was famous. He was killed because some people in power hated him. Because he was doing things that they didn't like, so they shot him. 
Yeah, Tom? like I, w- mm-hmm. I was in show like he was the U.S. president. Brought him famous. But again, just because somebody is famous and they die or something bad happens, <clears throat> that's not enough of a connection to their celebrity. You can't just say, oh, well, if, he, if he'd never been the president, he'd still be alive. It's not going to work. Look, look back at the example here. Justin Bieber and Chrissy Teigen. What does he say about Justin Bieber? When people are going about their daily business, doing nothing interesting, they're followed and hassled by paparazzi. As a result, they occasionally lose control and end up in trouble. Okay? What does that mean? This is still underdeveloped if you just leave it here. Because this is an abstraction right now. It starts being a good example. It starts being specific when you give a specific name and bring this business to life with a specific person's example. Okay, so in the abstract form, he's talking about a celebrity that's followed and hassled by paparazzi and occasionally they lose control and end up in trouble. That's the disadvantage. Example, Justin Bieber. He's had a number of altercations with photographers. Okay. That's the example. They occasionally lose control and end up in trouble. Justin Bieber, altercations with photographers. Why? Because they refused to stop photographing him, even when he told them to stop many times. Okay, so he punches out a photographer, and then he gets in trouble with police. Okay, so what? Well, this example shows that being famous can be very stressful, which is a disadvantage of being famous. Chrissy Teigen. Okay, right away goes into the example. Okay, goes out for dinner after having a kid, posts photos. People accuse her of being a terrible mother for leaving her baby at home and going out so soon after giving birth. Okay. As a result, she's being judged by all these people who have no business judging her. Because when you're a celebrity, everything that you do publicly gets judged. Whether you like it or not, people can't help themselves, they judge you. Okay, the consequence was she ended up having severe doubts about her ability as a mother, even though she had done nothing wrong. Right? Who here hasn't left their kid with a babysitter or a family member and gone out to dinner with their husband or with a friend after giving birth? Every single mother has. Right? She didn't do anything differently compared to any other mother. But because she's a celebrity, she's judged. And that's what this is about. Okay? This also shows that being famous has drawbacks. You have to make these very clear, explicit connections between the idea, the example, and it always comes back to the prompt. Like when I said at the beginning of class, look at your outline, look at the prompt. And I'm not kidding when I say do that three times. You will be surprised at how the third time you make the comparison, you'll go, oh, hang on. I don't think this part really answers the prompt. Let's uh, look at another one. Okay, this is Kelly's. Uh, 
So this should be one paragraph, right? Yeah. So this is not appropriate for a body paragraph. Do you know why? No. Because the purpose of each of your body paragraphs is to provide a supporting reason for your opinion. Right? Your opinion, the thesis, is the last sentence in the introduction, right? Always. So body paragraph one is reason number one. And that needs to be the focus of the topic sentence. So if, if you're completely stuck, you're totally stuck, you don't know how to begin a potty paragraph, don't even think about it and just write something like, the first reason why being a celebrity can be problematic is bum bum bum. Your, okay. second, your second body paragraph would begin, Another reason why being a celebrity can cause problems is, see, and the, the essay starts to write itself. But these are conventions that you have to follow. When I start reading your body paragraph and you write something like this, then I know exactly what that body paragraph is going to be about, and I'm happy because I'm not going to be confused. This doesn't reflect what's in your body paragraph. Everything in life. Okay. Maybe it would be better if you just got rid of that first one. The truth is, there are many downsides of being as there are, as there are benefits. That's the way to do it. For example, whoops, comma. Lady Diana was very famous for being a member of all of her contribution to charitable organizations, as well as her contribution to charitable organizations. She had money, fame, and beauty. Um, so writing has to go from general to specific, right? Yep. It always proceeds that way, general to specific. So this is more general than this. It'd be better if, she, if you put she had everything a woman could want, money, fame, and beauty. However, same paragraph, not on the other hand. However, paparazzi were constantly, uh, what's this word? Threatening. 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 Uh, threatening. With T, yeah. Threat, with a T, E, N. N, E, yeah. Threatening her by following her taking pictures almost on top of her face, making her life a nightmare. That's a bit awkward, but okay, it's good. Thus being a celebrity is not an advantage. It's underdeveloped because you haven't talked about what problems this led to. You've got constantly threatening her, but you've also given an advantage. Yeah. This should be like one short sentence. Most of your development needs to be about this. This is the development. Uh, this is just the topic sentence, right? Yeah. You, you haven't explained your position. That's what they're looking for. When they say reasons and examples, like again, up to here, 
is not an explanation for why celebrity can cause problems. Only this part is. So I, I'm not sure if you if you follow what I'm saying. Yeah. So basically, you want yeah, you want to explain, given reason, and also explain why. Mm -hmm. Mm -hmm. And it has to be a hundred percent related to the prompt. So if you're taking a position that celebrity causes disadvantages, then that's what that paragraph needs to be about. All this other stuff about the advantages of being a celebrity, that does not strengthen your argument. It's not a reason and it's not an example for your position. You're, you're in a sense, you're arguing against yourself when you spend a lot of time talking about the other point of view. So better not do it. I would minimize this, uh, get rid of much of it, and focus on developing this. Okay, Dina. Uh, mm -hmm. No, it's only one. Uh, it's uh, uh, I corrected there yeah, only this part. So, which one? The second one. Second one, yes. Okay. Let's see how long this is. No, okay, eight. Too long. Eighty-seven words. That's good. Remember the examples that we saw. The example paragraphs were one twenty-seven and one thirty-three. With the whole thing coming in at just over three hundred words. Uh, so at this point, it's a little light. Okay. Yeah. Well, being a public figure. Well, well, let's see how it looks. This is famous. It comes at a great cost. Very good. You've mentioned the other point of view, but you've given your position here. This is good. This is all you need to do to at least acknowledge the other point of view. You don't need more than this. Privacy is the main downside of being a celebrity, which is negatively affecting the quality of their social life. Um, be careful with your pronouns. It's not clear what there refers to. Uh, famous people's social lives. Hmm. Like Ronaldo. Goes outside for a dinner with their family. Uh, you can just say family. It would be beloved family, but again, it's this word doesn't add anything. They cannot spend that time alone without interference. Because mm. they're not interfering. They're being interfered with. Yeah. So, without interference from other people and photographers. This is an abstraction. I think this mm. is what you were asking about earlier. Yes. The, the fact that you mentioned one celebrity's name, Ronaldo... I Doesn't, think, yeah. The, uh, the, hmm. the example is not about Ronaldo. This is still very abstract. The problem, like, uh, like uh, I want to say in the exam, maybe I don't have this topic is, I don't have a famous uh, example. Make it up. Uh, what is this word? Constantly hounded? Yep. Which H mean Well hound is a hound is another phrase for a it's another term for a dog. Like wolf hound. Um so if you're hounded by people, it's like dogs surrounded, like, like surrounded. Yeah, like hunting dogs chasing you. Uh, 
Um, he rarely leaves the house. As a result, as a result, he rarely leaves the house. and has to fly to, let's say, private islands to find any peace away from photographers. Do, sorry, do to being constantly out of wherever he goes. Okay. I just made this up. I don't know anything about Ronaldo. And look, now this is roughly the right length. Uh, sorry, go ahead. Yeah, actually, there is two Ronaldo. I don't know who's Ronaldo. She's talking about. Who's Ronaldo? Yeah, the Portuguese or the Brazilian. I oh. think it's the Portuguese one. <laughs> <laughs> because the Portuguese loves uh, photographers. Oh, yeah. Okay. <laughs> <laughs> I'm sorry. I know nothing about Ronaldo the person. Uh, make, up another, make up another player. Make up the name so that nobody can contradict you. Right? Yeah. Because okay. you, you don't want to say something that's obviously false like you don't want to say diana loved the paparazzi because she hated them right they were awful to her right but feel free one to make stuff up yeah go ahead there is one in, sorry there is one specific that exactly what you explain here happened to him and his name is messi okay actually you, you describe exactly what happened to him yeah, he was the president of Shears, and he had to fly to an island to have peace in Argentina. Yeah, so when he was chasing by the, or hunted by paparazzi, he just fly to La Patagonia, which is completely desert. Deserted? Deserted. It's a lot of land where you can escape and be in peace. Yeah, that's exactly what happened to him, Messi. Yeah, other celebrities, they wear disguises. Like they grow facial hair so that nobody can recognize them. Um, <laughs> yeah. Like you, you want to be famous, but then you have to hide from yourself. That's the irony. So it, if you want to throw the word irony in there, wow, that'll be a really solid response. Okay, does everyone know the, the meaning of the word irony? Not painful? Sorry? Painful? I, I, sorry, I didn't understand. Painful? Painful? Not exactly. It might be. This is a good word to use, especially in something like this. Like people like Bieber want to be famous, but then they don't realize what that uh, what that entails exactly. Irony means getting what you want, but not in the way that you want it. There is a, I think the best definition of irony that I ever got was from this uh, TV show Frasier, and I don't know if the example was made up, or if it was a real life example, but they were talking about an actress who, she was not a very famous actress. She was a beautiful girl, but she her talent was only so-so, so she wasn't getting very famous. She was just getting small roles in movies. And as a result, she got so depressed that she wanted to kill herself. But she said, "I'm my death is going to be the most beautiful death ever, and all the newspapers are going to cover it, and everyone's going to cry over me. 
and at least I'll be famous when I die. So she put on this gorgeous white dress like a wedding gown, and then to kill herself, she took a whole bunch of sleeping pills and then washed them down with alcohol. Well, this is not the most effective way to kill yourself. So she eats all these sleeping pills, she drinks a whole bunch of alcohol, and she falls asleep. So in the middle of the night, she just wakes up, she's got the worst stomach pains, and she just runs to the bathroom, and she's constantly throwing up. And it's so exhausting, she passes out with her head in the toilet and drowns in her own vomit. Oh. And that's how she became famous. That sounds sarcastic. No, it's ironic. She became famous, so she got what she wanted, but not in the way she expected it. So let's say getting what you want, but not in the way you expect. That's kind of a disgusting example, but hopefully it'll help you yeah. remember what irony means. Both Fame comes with a price, CE, and celebrity, and a celebrity has to pay it. Okay. Uh, John, Johnny Depp, a famous actor who was mentioned as a wife beater. Um, okay, so again, this doesn't support your argument, mm -hmm. right? This is just, uh, I would call it filler. Do you know what I mean? Oh, yeah. It, it's filler content. It's not a reason or an example that strengthens your argument. So here we go. Johnny Depp is a famous actor. He was accused of being a wife beater. I denied the accusation, but still struggling to get out of the mess. He sued the newspaper that mentioned it as a wife beater. Okay, it's not clear how this is related to the prompt. You have to make that connection explicitly. Because that is his personal life and they are discussing his personal matter in the media. Well, I'm not sure if this example works. How did all that get out into the media? I think her ex-wife's interview after they were interviewing her ex-wife. Mm -hmm. So she told the media that uh, he used to drink and beat me. Yeah. When really it was they both drank and she beat him. Yeah. <laughs> <laughs> well, that, that's a messy couple. But okay, but that's a topic for another day. Um, but you have to make that connection to... So should I mention the wife as well? But then it's not about being famous, it's about having a nasty wife. But he's facing the, like, uh, I think her wife, his wife also sued him. I, I think there are two cases running parallel. But, but the focus of your description is about his troubles with his wife but in this one it's the soccer players troubles with the media mm -hmm. simply because of being a celebrity not because okay this is this is where you can get into trouble if you pick a celebrity example where the celebrity was accused of killing someone for example mm -hmm. that's not going to work because he's not splashed all over the front page of the newspapers because he's a famous actor. He's on the front page of the newspapers because he's a famous actor and he murdered someone. So it's not the media's fault. If you kill someone or if you're accused of killing someone, 
they're going to put your face on the on the front page. Mm -hmm. Right. So you would need to talk about how Johnny Depp wants to be left alone, but he's being treated unfairly by the media. I'm I'm not sure how you could do it with this example, the way we did it with Ronaldo or the way with uh, Chrissy Teigen or Justin Bieber. Because in those three cases... I will change the person. Well, the, the similarity between all those three examples of Ronaldo, Chrissy Teigen, and Bieber is that they didn't do anything to deserve this excessive attention from the paparazzi and it's causing problems in their life. Remember, the essay is about advantages and disadvantages. So you have to talk about the disadvantages that being a celebrity causes. This Johnny Depp, his, he's suffering because he's got an aggressive ex-wife who's making accusations about him. So it's, it's the wife that's the problem or the cause, not the fact that he's a celebrity necessarily. Right? It, it's a messy example, and it's, it's not just clearly, clearly, clearly related to what the prompt is asking about. All right, and we've got another one from Mohammed here. As mentioned previously, avoid pronouns in topic sentences. What, what word should be here instead of it? Celebrity. Celebrity. Switch to it afterwards also has a lot of disadvantages. For instance, okay, so this is a fragment. Disturbance and outdoors from their fans, also lack of privacy. Okay, so a lot of grammar issues. We're not gonna worry about those right now. Sometimes famous people think that if they weren't famous, they would be able to enjoy their life. Princess Diana was an example of where lack of privacy can lead to death. Their Egyptian businessman boyfriend, which forced them to try to run away before facing a painful accident and dying. Yeah. Okay. To, okay, the content is good here. The content is good. Um, there are a couple issues, though. You start the paragraph by saying, disturbance in outdoors from their fans and lack of privacy. But then you don't talk about problems with fans here. You talk about problems with the media. So that should be mentioned in the introduction of this paragraph. Um, sometimes famous people think that if, it, if they weren't have been able to enjoy my life, this is is not needed because it doesn't make your argument stronger. Uh, does that make sense, Mod? Yes. All right, so don't even include stuff like this. Um, Princess Diana, okay, example. Lack of privacy, okay, good. Lead to death. To make this stronger, you should add that this was not a one-time event, right? That this was a lifelong issue. That for many, many years, she was constantly being, we've got this word again, hounded by reporters. And that this was just the, the last incident where this happened. 
Mm. Right, but you've only got you've only got two sentences in your example. It should be significantly longer, almost twice as long, if you want to follow the pattern that the the other people were using. Okay. Is there anyone else that we can talk about? Maybe another final example that we can put together right now for a celebrity that has suffered as a result of being famous? Uh, so how about uh, Prince Harry and Michael, uh, Meghan? Because they stepped back from the royal titles and still they are chasing uh, by the media. It's funny that you mentioned that one. So that's the official story, but then lots of people say that Megan is a real publicity hound. There's there's an expression. But it's still, they, they, uh, like they stepped back from the royal titles, so they want private life, isn't it? They did it for the the normal life, not life as a celebrity. So. Let's pick a different example because I keep reading that everything they're saying about that is nonsense. That Megan's goal is to be hounded by a by a paparazzi. She wants to be constantly. Uh, but she also in the sued. Media. Did she? Did she? Yeah. Yes. Okay. All right. So tell me about tell me about Megan and Harry. So we can write it like they are royal, they're the royal couple. Everybody knows <laughs> Meghan Markle, uh, Meghan, so it was Markle. Markle. Markle, yeah. Markle and Prince Harry. And they got married and they tried, I think, more than two years mm -hmm. to, to live in a private life, but they failed. So they decided to take a step back and give up their royal titles and they want to live in a peaceful life. Okay. Private, you don't say. You're not convinced with my <laughs> idea? Okay. All right, well, let's, let's brainstorm. Um, okay. Who else? Does anyone else have any... Uh, yes. Any other good examples? I would say uh, Michael Jackson. Okay. He was yeah, he was very famous and he doesn't have a personal life or private life. Always surrounded by uh, photographers. And even he was hiding his uh, kid's face, so they, he doesn't want to let them to have the same problem. This is a good sentence you can use. Some celebrities have to resort to extreme measures to escape the paparazzi. What does resort to, have to resort to mean? This is a really good expression. Okay. Sorry? Like take action? Take action. Uh, it's a synonym for do. But uh, do you know the expression last resort? Yep. So it's the, it's the same meaning as if someone says as a last resort, what does that mean? Uh, as a last option. Yeah. So have to take this option. Okay. For 
example, Michael Jackson hid his child's identity to prevent the media from recognizing her, something like that. Is there, so that's that's not going to be enough. What else could we say about Michael Jackson or about his family or about his struggles with the media? Oh, uh, you're talking about uh, his sexual orientation? Okay. It was um, no long ago a documentary about his um, sexual orientation of being gay mm -hmm. and having um, sex with uh, kids. Yeah, so basically underage. Mm -hmm. And um, yeah, that was a huge problem in his life well if it was true then that's one thing now so i don't know any i don't know enough about michael jackson to say anything about that but be careful with examples mm -hmm. where the celebrity has engaged in potentially criminal behavior and that's why the media are fixated upon that person so that's the problem with the johnny depp example because if that stuff that Amber heard his wife said was true, then when famous people do illegal things, then the media really pays attention to that. And just like this, if he's doing illegal things and the media is trying to find evidence of that, then again, it's kind of reasonable, their behavior. right? They're like a kind of like a detective function of the media. So you need an example where someone doesn't deserve being hounded by the media. That's the only kind of example that's going to work here. Uh, Mr. Leon, this, uh, as you said, have to resort. We can use it like, uh, for example, sometimes in other another essay about government have to resort some solu in solution paragraph mm -hmm. to extreme measures to solve this problem. Yeah, and I would keep the extreme measures. Like if you're going to write this down, yes, I would keep this whole part to here because resort to, just like as a last resort, means this is the final thing you're going to try because you're super frustrated, nothing else has worked. So it often is going to be an extreme measure, something that you were not willing to try earlier. Uh, in a medical situation, right? patients get to die. There's a small chance that this extremely risky operation might work. So we have mm -hmm. to resort to extreme measures. Mm -hmm. um, I just quickly Googled Michael Jackson and paparazzi issues that it would take me a while to look through this but nothing too obvious comes up maybe i'm not searching the right way so again we want an example where the person is like blameless they don't deserve this kind of paparazzi behavior Well, if we follow this, some celebrity have to resort to extreme measures to escape the paparazzi. Uh, I can give good examples such as the Wonder Line. Uh, Michael Jackson decided to create a Wonderland, as they he call it, mm -hmm. where no one could have um, access to his land, his property. 
So that could be a very good um, example of privacy. That and that's and that's like what you said about Messi having to go to some remote area to find mm -hmm. any kind of privacy, right? Yeah. I mean, I just Googled like celebrity problems with paparazzi and there's some stuff about Adele, Jennifer Lawrence, Katy Perry, but mostly it's about how they kind of fought back against the paparazzi. I, I think the examples that we've got right now are good, but it would be helpful if we... Uh, find someone else too. Oh, Britney Spears. Uh, do you know Alec Baldwin? Oh, yeah. So Alec Baldwin has also gotten into trouble uh, fighting with uh, with celebrities. Mm -hmm. He was married with Kim Basinger. Yeah. And uh, he was in the newspaper because he was um, um, abusing her physically. That's the only thing I know. <laughs> <laughs> okay, so don't don't talk <laughs> about that one. <laughs> But I know he's very famous and he trying to avoid paparazzi also. Uh, but yeah, Alec Baldwin seems here he's pushed paparazzi and uh, knocked the equipment out of their hands. Sean Penn. Um, he had to pay damages for some stuff he, uh, or some hitting for hitting someone. Oh. Sean was filming Shanghai Surprise in China and discovered that there was someone hiding in his hotel room. It turned out to be paparazzi, and Sean allegedly dangled the man from the balcony, then fled the country before he could be charged with anything. Okay, another, there's more footage of Sean kicking and punching a photographer. Uh, and he spent a month in jail in 1987 for kicking someone for getting too close for pictures. Okay, I'm gonna, oh. just gonna share this, uh, this one here with you. So this, this has some good stories. Hugh Grant, I didn't read that one. Woody Harrelson, uh, my internet's being slow so I can't see what the other ones are. Okay, so a lot of good examples here. If you use these examples, you have to put them in your own words. Okay, don't just copy from, uh, from the articles. Okay, is there, are there any questions I can answer at this point? Is there anything anyone wants to know before I leave you with this topic? Yeah, I've got a question. So do you think it's more, um, maybe more easy to go to the example first and then the reason? It depends on the topic. For most of the topics we've seen, it makes a lot of sense to first talk about a research study and then follow that up with an example. That's the way that most people write papers in university 
in high school and it works really well. It's a very powerful, easy to remember formula. That being said, in the examples that we looked at today, the whole thing is the example, right? Yeah. Okay, there's, there's not gonna be research studies where they interviewed 100 celebrities to find out how they feel about the paparazzi. Right, it, it's not gonna be believable to say anything like that. So just make your point and immediately provide a strong example. One example in each body paragraph. So in total, we want, we want to talk about two celebrities and focus on development. Don't worry about the timing, especially if you're new to this. Focus on quality, because this is something that most people are not doing very successfully. They're not thoroughly developing their ideas. So let's, let me modify the template a bit. Normally, you've got trees, topic, reason, evidence, example, significance. This is all you need for band seven. Band seven means you've given them what they've asked for. They told you to support your opinion with reasons. They told you to use an example. If you do so, you get a seven as long as nothing is too confusing. But to go up to an eight, let me add expand. Okay, maybe another two sentences, another couple sentences. So about three sentences to four sentences for your example. Okay, so for this particular topic, let's go like this. Three sentences for the example, at least. Okay, topic and reason is one sentence, but then build on that with two additional sentences. Give an example, build on it with three additional sentences. For example, Justin Bieber has had much trouble as a result of his run-ins with, with uh, paparazzi, okay? Now this is just a rule of thumb. If you get stuck, two sentences, three sentences. But mostly the problem with most people's writing is that it's thin. There's not a lot of meat to sink your teeth into if you're a reader. You are trying to paint a picture using words, something the reader can really see in his mind's eye or her mind's eye. Okay, take your time, do it well. Uh, have a look at this website if, uh, if you're really stuck on who to talk about. Okay, thank you, Jen. Okay, I look forward to seeing your work on Thursday. Please submit it by noon. Thank you. Good night, guys. Okay, Good night. Take, care, take care, everyone. Yes.